Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's Texas uh, College Association Virtual College Fair. My name is Jeff. I'll be your facilitator. Certainly appreciate you being with us this evening. Just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, your camera is turned off. Your microphone is muted. The uh, attendees uh, will not be able to talk or ask questions. Excuse me, you can ask questions through the Q&A box below. Um, feel free to type your questions to any of the six institutions at any time, and they'll uh, be happy to answer you as quickly as possible. If they don't get to your question before the end of our session tonight, they can follow up via email later, so it will get answered. Um, without further ado, I will turn it over to our first university, which is Wichita State. Take it away. All right, thank you very much. Let me go ahead and share my screen there. Everybody can see, you can see my PowerPoint okay? I will take it as a yes. All right, so my name is Matt Zekin. I am the Regional Admissions Representative for Wichita State University. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and I'm happy to be here tonight. Let me go ahead and roll on into some quick facts about Wichita State. So Wichita State University, we are a uh, NCAA Division I university. We're a part of the American Athletic Conference. Our biggest athletic program is gonna be basketball. We actually just won our regular season uh, championship for the American. Uh, Wichita State University is uh, the most diverse uh, research university in the state of Kansas. 39% of our students come from diverse backgrounds. It's also housed in the largest city in the state of Kansas and the most diverse city in the state of Kansas. 44% uh, of our students are first generation college bound. We have some great programming for those students. Average incoming GPA is going to be a 3.54 with a 23 to 24 average incoming ACT score. We have esports gaming on campus and the highest first year employment and salaries for Kansas jobs, according to the Kansas region's data. Uh, so a lot of great things happening at our university. Students also get a lot of free stuff with their cost of attendance, a free YMCA membership, a free city of Wichita public buses, a bus pass rather, and tickets to home athletic games and fine art events. Uh, students from the uh, counties that are listed on here, the Texas counties that are listed on your screen, all receive in-state tuition at Wichita State University through our Shocker City Partnership. It's an automatic tuition discount uh, that saves you over $9,000 per year compared to the out-of-state price for an average cost of attendance, I'm sorry, average tuition and fees cost of $8,434 per year. So if you're looking for an out-of-state university and you are uh, living in one of the Texas metro uh, counties that you see on the screen here, you can get in-state tuition. And even if you don't live in one of those counties, all of the rest of the state of Texas still gets a 33% tuition discount through our Shopper Select program. For admissions to Wichita State University, it's going to be a 2.25 unweighted high school GPA or a 21 ACT composite score or a 1080 SAT composite score. And that GPA is based off of an unweighted 4.0 GPA scale. Uh, so we are test optional for admissions. Uh, that means, you know, it doesn't have to be all three of those requirements. It can simply be one of those three requirements. So you can get admitted just off of that 2.25 unweighted high school GPA. Uh, we are on the Common App. You can also find us uh, at wichita.edu slash apply. Very short, simple application. A lot of students tell me they can do it on their phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a $40 app fee, but we do take app fee waivers and we don't need a transcript from you until you graduate from high school. We offer some excellent scholarships that can be stacked on top of those tuition discounts that I've mentioned before. Uh, our merit scholarship ranges from eight to $16,000 over four years. Uh, November 1 is our priority consideration date. Uh, so that means you just have to be admitted before November 1st. Our application opens on July 1st. So if you're a current junior uh, rising senior, you can apply this summer on July 1st, get yourself admitted before you start your senior year and get considered for a merit scholarship. Uh, it's gonna be based off of a combination of either, uh, I'm sorry, it's a combination of GPA and either a ACT or SAT score. Uh, so you can see right there on the grid how much you can receive automatically just for applying and getting admitted to Wichita State. Some of our popular majors are listed on here. By far, aerospace engineering is our number one program. We are actually the number one aerospace program in terms of research and development funding that we receive from industry leading partners. That's a fancy way of saying that the aerospace industry gives us a ton of money for the work that we do in uh, aerospace engineering. We have a great school of business. 
uh, with a number of majors that also have a real estate tie-in as well. If you're looking to get a real estate licensure with your business degree, uh, fine arts and media arts, our media arts in particular are housed in a beautiful 35,000 square foot studio space called Shocker Studios. We have the second oldest criminal justice program in the entire country and a forensic science program, education, nursing, dental hygiene, social work, exercise science, top 20 sports management program, and an honors college all part of the 70 undergraduate majors that we offer at Wichita State University. Now, by far, my favorite thing about Wichita State is the career readiness opportunities that we offer through our Career Development Center. And that takes place uh, with our Applied Learning Program. That's basically just hands-on learning experiences that happen through internships, co-ops, and all sorts of different types of undergraduate research opportunities. Our students work with 500 unique employers in the Wichita area, the greater Kansas area, and as well as out of state areas that offer summer internships as well uh, to bring in some additional funding for themselves uh, through our uh, applied learning program. It's led to those highest first year employment rates and salaries for Kansas jobs. This is a really cool opportunity to build out your resume while you're working on your degree. Campus life is excellent at Wichita State. We got a lot of fun stuff going on, over 350 uh, annual events. Uh, we have camel rides in the spring on a random hump day or Wednesday, over 300 student organizations, 200, I'm sorry, 20 plus Greek life organizations. We got a brand new YMCA facility, intramural sports. I mentioned uh, Shocker Athletics. We are a part of the American Athletic Conference. We also have an excellent bowling team with over 20 national championships. Uh, just a little fun fact there. Uh, and we have an esports gaming lab with four varsity teams too. So if uh, video games are your thing, we've got that going. Uh, we got a great food truck plaza on our campus as well. So if you are into the food truck scene, uh, we've got a little bit of that. We got something for everybody at Wichita State in terms of the fun stuff. And our housing options are excellent. Uh, we have three different housing options, two of which are going to be for freshmen. Uh, Shocker Hall is either double or single, single occupancy. Uh, most students live in a double occupancy room in Shocker Hall. Uh, it's our oldest dorm on campus. No, it was only built in 2014, which means it's a seven-year-old dorm that is the oldest on our campus. So you're not living in grubby old dorms that were built in the 1950s. You live in brand new facilities no matter where you're living at Wichita State. October 1 is when that application for housing opens up and goes live. That's all I have. Feel free to copy down my contact information. Uh, thank you so much for considering Wichita State University. Uh, I hope this was informative. And again, my name is Matthew Zekin, Houston Regional Admissions Representative for Wichita State. Thanks a lot, y'all. Thanks, Matthew. Appreciate that. Students, remember you can ask questions along the way. Feel free to uh, just hit the Q&A button below and type away. Next up, we've got the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. You good with the screen? I hope so. Excellent. Um, my name is Rebecca Heilman. I am with the University of Nebraska Lincoln. I'm based here in Houston also, um, but we do actually have two other reps in Texas up in Dallas Fort Worth area. So that's the really nice thing is we are all around the state and definitely want to help you guys through this entire process because we know it is a little overwhelming to look at an out of state institution. We are part of the Big Ten Conference. That's where most students are going to recognize that big N um, with D1 athletics. Not only are the athletics important, but it's also we are going to be looking at all of those research opportunities. We are a major research university, but we are one of the smallest Big Ten universities. That just gives a lot more hands-on opportunities for our students if you're afraid of, you know, being just one um, in a large group setting. We have about 21,000 undergraduates. All 50 states are represented on campus and 114 countries. So if you wanna meet other people from Texas, great. But if you're like, hey, I, I wanted a little bit of a break, you can definitely meet other people that are gonna be also out of state, but maybe not like you. Um, we have a 17 to one student to instructional faculty ratio and our average class size of class for our undergraduates is 37. That means you're gonna have those really personal connections with 
with those faculty members all through your program. I had classes of, you know, four students. So as you go up in those degrees, you're definitely going to see those really hands on activities. Lincoln itself is about 280,000 people. It has everything you need and want, except for Whataburger and HEB. So sorry, but you can ship that up to the resident halls if that is something that is important to you. Um, we definitely looked the other day for a couple of students here in Houston. What's also great is we are right in downtown Lincoln, and that means that there's just lots of opportunities to walk off campus and enjoy yourself, whether that be coffee shops, restaurants. The Pinnacle Bank Arena is where our basketball teams play, but they also bring in large concerts that I know a lot of students, if you're coming from these large metros, that you're used to. Um, and you see that number, how is that going to be possible? We do bring in large concerts, and they're very affordable tickets for our students um, with that. We have 150 different areas of study. Um, so the big ones that we see a lot of our students coming from Texas are our College of Business, our College of Engineering, and then I've seen a lot of students this year in our College of Journalism and Mass Communication. And a big part of that is because Huddle is right off campus for our students. If that is something that you're interested in, that journalism program is definitely a very hands-on program for our students. But we also have um, our College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources, our College of Architecture, our Arts and Science, Education and Human Sciences, Hickson Lee College of Fine and Performing Arts. We do have a performance center right on campus that they also bring large concerts um, and performances into. Um, and then we do have public affairs and community service. And then we do have also a pre-professional advising. So if you are looking at anything in that pre-health or that pre-law, we can definitely help you out through that. We have over 500 registered student organizations on campus, everything from those academic ones. So definitely encourage you to get involved in those, but also those fun ones. And so those are always the ones that is just so great to see students out. We do have um, sorority and fraternities with um, those different houses right off campus for our students. So that is something that interests you. We do have um, sorority and fraternity houses for our students. Um, another big part of being at Nebraska is those hands-on experiences, not only as like an upperclassman, a graduate student, but we're even encouraging our students that um, can get involved as a freshman, especially if you know right away, hey, I want to study abroad or anything like that. Talking with your advisor is really easy to make those connections day one and start to plan that so it doesn't increase your time that you're at Nebraska and you can still graduate in the four years with us. We do have honors programs. We have a couple different ones, including our business one and then our rakes one, which is our um, computer science and business, and then just a general one. The computer science, the rakes and the business one is a little bit more selective, um, but they do give out some additional scholarships. A big one that we are really encouraging students to look at if you're looking at engineering is our partnership with Kiwit. They are located in Omaha, which is less than an hour from Lincoln. So it's a great opportunity. Um, the tuition is gonna be covered. They do study abroad opportunities, all of those different things as part of that program, but it is a very select one. So if you're interested in that, definitely apply earlier, the better for those programs. For admission requirements, we are going to look at some core classes that you need to be taking for units of English, for math, three of social sciences, three of our natural sciences, and then two of a world language. And then this year and next year, we are going to be test flexible with that. So if you have a 3.0 out of a 4.0 GPA, a 20 on your ACT or a 1040, or you're in the top 50% of your class, you will be admitted to Nebraska. Now, our out-of-state merit-based scholarships I'm not sure where they're going to be. They may be require those test scores again in the future, but they start at an 1140 SAT for $5,000 and then jump to 13,000 um, at 1180. And that is going to put you at an in-state rate um, with everything. It's about 39,000 for the year. We are doing in-person visits. So definitely here's that link, check it out. Um, but we're also doing virtual visits with the department. So if you want to speak to business, um, and I know I have a question that I will get to after I'm done, um, we'll definitely be able to set that up. And then if you guys do want more information, if you could grab a picture of that QR code and fill it out, that would be greatly appreciated. And so that is just a little bit about Nebraska. Be sure to put more questions in that chat. Thanks, Rebecca. Really appreciate that. Next up, we have the University of Cincinnati.
Hi, good evening, everyone. So yeah, my name is Cameron Newton. I'm with the University of Cincinnati. So I'm actually one of our regional coordinators. I'm based full-time in Dallas-Fort Worth. So while I do live and work in Dallas, um, of course, I do work with students all over the state of Texas. So um, yeah, we'll just dive right in here. Um, University of Cincinnati, we are located, of course, in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are very much an urban university. Um, but as you can see, we're very distinct too. You know, when you're on and off campus, you know, we're having that campus feel. Um, but we're, again, only about a mile and a half from the downtown core of the city. So it's a really great environment, really great campus. And really the biggest thing I wanted to emphasize for us is we're all about experience-based learning. That's the one thing you probably want to take away from, from UC is we're all about experiences for our students. So what that means for you is we were actually the global inventor of cooperative education back in 1906. We we're the first school in the world to do it. And how that looks like for our students is you know coming uh, to the university for their first year, um, have a very traditional fall, spring, and have their summer off. And then for some of our majors, you'll start your rotations and co-ops starting your second year. So if you're in engineering, you'll actually be for that usually that spring semester out of class and instead working full time um, at a relevant employer earning a salary. Um, you'll do up to actually five rotations, so about a year and a half of professional full time work before you've ever uh, left, you know, walk the graduation stage. Um, on average earning just over $10,000 per semester. So that's something that's really, really powerful for our students. Um, you'll see it's required in a College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning, and then also the Information Technology major. And then we have some additional colleges and programs where it's optional. Um, so you can be a little bit flexible there and um, integrate clinicals or other types of things to get involved. Um, beyond just co-ops, but it's something that we're really proud of. And then as a campus as a whole, 100% of our students do participate in some sort of outside the classroom experience. So for a lot of our students, that is co-op, but for others, it's internships. We do have a medical campus, which is right across the street from the main campus. That med campus has three hospitals directly on there, including one of the top children's hospitals in the country with another six hospitals within walking distance. So if you're in the nursing, pre-med, um, any of the health sciences, it's a really great environment. Um, to take advantage of those opportunities really right in your backyard, in addition to all the different things within the city too. As far as our campus, we are large. Um, we're just about 47,000 total students, uh, 20, just under 28,000 students that are, are uptown, which is our main campus, um, and then about, um, sorry, 20,000 undergrads at the, at the main campus. Um, 17 to one student to faculty ratio and over just under just about 83% of our courses are fewer than 50 students. So while we are a large university, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in a classroom at 300 students all the time either. Um, we're about 21% out of state, 15% multicultural, which does not include international, about four and a half percent international, and we're 21% first generation. So that's really one of the biggest things there. Um, in addition to that, we do have a very active study abroad scene. Typically, again, in a normal, in a normal year, uh, just over 1,500 students a year are going to be doing study abroad. Um, those experiences can be done um, for a couple of days to a week to a semester to over a year. So it just depends on the situation. And then also with the cooper uh, cooperative education program, those aren't done just in Cincinnati. They can be done nationwide and internationally. So if you wanted to get paid to live in Germany working from, from Mercedes Benz, that's something that our students are able to do, or Tesla in California, um, or other companies in Australia, Japan, China, and really across the world. So it's a really powerful um, program for that to, um, to get involved. And then beyond that, um, we do have the College Conservatory of Music. Um, it's a world-renowned program. In a typical year, again, we're doing just about a thousand performances through the conservatory alone. And actually the conservatory accounts for over 100 academic programs by itself, when the university as a whole has just over about, three, about 300. Um, so we have a very strong conservatory program and really a lot of ways to be involved and have a, a great campus environment. Um, it's hard to talk about the university without talking about the city itself. The city of Cincinnati, we're a mid-sized city, about 2 million people in the metro area. We're about 25 minutes from the international airport. Um, we do have direct flights from DFW, usually on Delta and American. Um, but really, it's a mid-sized city, but there are tons of things to do. Um, so you have all the amenities of a, of a very large city, but in a much smaller package and something that's not as, I guess, crazy with traffic and, and just people, people everywhere. It's a really good medium there. Um, and over 400 Fortune 500 companies are actually have, has presence in Cincinnati. So it really makes getting those internships and co-ops really simple if you want to stay in the Cincinnati area. But of course, if you want to go beyond that, that's available too. Um, also a very low cost of living relatively. 
Um, so again, you have those all those different experiences that you're able to take advantage of for your career, um, but also if you wanted to stay in the area, it's a great place just from the food, the culture, all the festivals that go on um, with a, again, a pretty affordable place to be too. As far as the admissions process, we are on the Common App. We are holistic. Uh, December the 1st is going to be our early action deadline. Um, that's going to be important for our competitive majors, scholarships, and also the university honors program. We are also test optional um, for, I know, for fall of 2021 and fall of 2022. More repeats to come if that does change. There are a couple of exceptions. Um, we are a direct entry university, so our direct entry nursing program and also the early childhood education program requires a test score along with our um, honors considerations. So um, you'll see some of the scholarships there. These are all automatic consideration scholarships. There's no separate application. And then you'll see the current estimated tuition based off of this year and also our housing and things like that. So if you have additional questions, definitely let me know. Um, otherwise, go Bearcats. Thanks so much, Cameron. Next up, we have the University of Kansas. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Megan Crockett Kuntz. I am the um, Texas admissions rep for KU. So if you live in Texas, which I'm assuming everyone um, on this does, I am your rep. So if you have any specific questions about majors or admissions, um, financial aid, please jot my email and my phone number down and give me a call. But we're gonna jump into some basic information about KU. We sit at about 19,000 undergrad students at our main campus in Lawrence. Um, we really think that's the sweet spot for us. Um, it, we're considered a medium-sized university, but we are lucky to have sort of all the big school amenities. Um, obviously, if you're familiar with KU, you know that basketball is a big part of the Jayhawk experience. Um, big 12 sports, Division I sports is definitely a piece of that as well. Um, so it's sort of like a more of a community type feel university, but with the fraternity and sorority life that everyone likes. Um, and obviously we're an AAU institution as well. So we are a top research um, university in that regard as well. One thing I always like to point out um, to my Texas kids is that we are 41% um, of our population is from out of state. So you will come to KU and it definitely feels like it is a giant melting pot of kids from all over the country. We have students from all 50 states and over um, 50 different countries. So it is definitely not just gonna be a bunch of kids from Kansas. It does not feel like that at all. I was an out-of-state student coming to KU and I made friends from all over the country, which is so nice. The average ACT of our students coming in is a 25.6. And GPA is right at about a 3.64. Um, we do have about 24% of our population considered to be students of color. And we are working to increase that number all the time with different programs on campus. I also wanna point out that we have over 400 current KU students that call Texas home. Um, it's always nice for my students to meet other kids from Texas when they go to KU, because if you need to carpool back or send clothes back during break. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities um, to network with other kids from your area. We have very active KU Alumni Association chapters throughout the state um, in Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio. Megan, if you can hear me, you've frozen. You might want to turn off your camera and just see if your video will work or your, your audio will work. All right, so we seem to have lost her, unfortunately. So why don't we uh, give her a minute to get back on and why don't we move on to Kansas State University? Hey, okay. 
Um, can you see my screen, Jeff? <laughs> Good to go. Awesome. I muted, of course. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Mandy Marchesini and I'm a K-State admissions representative located in Dallas. I work with students coming from North and Central Texas. Um, I also have a colleague who is regionally based down in the Houston area. Um, I graduated from K-State in May, 2017 with my degree in marketing and a minor in leadership studies. I'm originally from upstate New York. So um, I was also an out of state student at K-State, but I wanna thank you for attending tonight and I will jump right in. So talking a little bit about the general facts, Kansas State University is a large tier one research university located in the heart of the country. Manhattan, Kansas, K-State's home is consistently ranked as one of the top college towns in the nation. We're currently ranked at number three. We are a division one school and a member of the big 12 conference. So you get a large school feel at a bit of a smaller size since we have about 22,000 students. We are currently ranked by the Princeton Review as number one in the nation for happiest students number two for students who love their college, number three for best health services, as well as best quality of life, and number four for town gown relations. We have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio and a 97% job and continuing education placement rate for our students. So, wow, that was a lot of numbers. <laughs> um, moving forward, talking about academics, K-State has over 250 different majors for you to choose from, which is more than any other school in the Big 12. Most of our out-of-state students tend to major within business, uh, the College of Architecture, uh, the pre-med program is very popular, as well as our College of Engineering. Um, Pre-veterinary medicine is also one of our hallmark programs as we have one of the oldest vet schools in the nation. Many of our programs are ranked at the top of their fields, both regionally and nationally. So moving forward beyond the classroom, as a land-grant tier one research university, undergraduate research is an incredibly important part of our campus culture. All of our academic majors have the ability to participate in under undergraduate research alongside award-winning professors. We also have over 500 different clubs and organizations on our campus, ranging from academic-based and special interest clubs, honor societies, a highly involved student government, intramural sports, that just like gets the tip of the iceberg. We, many of our students also choose to study internationally through our Education Abroad Office, which offers hundreds of programs in over 80 different countries. Some students decide to participate in short week-long faculty-led trips. We also have month-long summer stays or semester-long experiences as well. Lastly, on this slide, Greek life is a huge part of our campus. We have 20 sororities and 32 fraternities. Many chapters also offer chapter housing for members, which is an additional living option to choose from. So thinking about the value in a K-State degree, we know that a college degree is a major investment, which is why we have numerous resources to help our graduates find jobs after they graduate. We have the largest uh, university-wide career fair in the Big 12 Conference. We have over 800 global employers that come visit Manhattan every year to recruit our students. Specific colleges and interest areas will also hold their own, host their own career fairs throughout the year. Our Career Center was ranked number 10 in the nation this year and has a large range of activities and services for students to use in order to feel more comfortable navigating the job market, no matter what their major is. And we work closely with our alumni association to help students find connections in the city, industry, or specific company that they're hoping to break into after they leave our campus. So to wrap it up, how do you apply? So we are test optional for admission. To apply to K-State, you will just need one of the following criteria on that screen. We don't have any required essays or letters of recommendation to be admitted. Our application is available via the Common App or directly on our website. If any seniors are watching, our application is still open to apply. For those juniors, our application will open for you on June 1st on our website or in August when the Common App opens. Talking about scholarships, when you apply to K-State with your test score and GPA, we will consider you for our automatic merit-based scholarships. We have a range of scholarships for a range of test scores and GPA. Scholarships begin at a 20 ACT or a 1030 SAT. So we do automatic test-based scholarships. When you apply with your test score, you will automatically receive the highest dollar amount that you qualify for. For this current academic year, we are offering test optional scholarships, which do have a supplemental application. So seniors, if you're going to apply to K-State, you'll need to not only complete that admissions app, but then also the test optional application by March 15th. Uh, so the test optional scholarships are a holistic review. We have a range of dollar amounts for these scholarships as well. Um, and for juniors, we're unsure at this time whether we're going to be offering test optional scholarships for 2022. So just keep an eye out for that. 
Wrapping up, if you're interested in learning more about K-State, any majors, particular interests that you may have, I would love for you to come visit with us on campus. We offer virtual and in-person visits and where uh, you can learn more about the academic area you're interested in, get a feel for whether uh, you know life as a Wildcat is gonna be for you. You can schedule campus visits by going on our website and you can see the upcoming availability there. And then I'm also always available as a resource. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but I cover North and Central Texas and I have a colleague down in Houston. You can feel free to shoot me a message and I can connect you um, with my colleague if you're down in Houston or um, I'm your go-to gal up here. Uh, but if you ever have questions, I'm best available via email, but I do also hold one-on-one -on -one personal Zoom meetings throughout the week. So um, you can, act, can connect with me virtually as well, but um, let me know if I can ever answer any questions and thanks for joining today. Thanks, Mandy. Really appreciate that. Next up, we have Samantha with Garden City Community College. Okay, so uh, my name is Kelsey. I'll actually be doing the presentation tonight instead of Samantha. Um, I am the other uh, admissions rep and campus tour coordinator for Garden City Community College. Um, so again, my name is Kelsey Bradford and I'm gonna hopefully show you guys um, what Buster Nation is like. So again, this is a little bit about our admissions department. Um, Cindy Sassman is our director of admissions and also our international student advisor. Samantha Garcia is our other, she's our assistant director of admissions and our other admissions representative. And again, I'm Kelsey, the admissions representative and campus tour coordinator. So if you guys wanna take a picture of this, feel free to contact me anytime and I'll put my information in the chat as well. So today, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the admissions process, cost of attendance, scholarships, degrees, certificates, athletics and activities, and residential life. So Garden City, Kansas has a population of about 26,000. Um, we currently have about 2,600 students enrolled, both online and in person, um, and it's really great that uh, we have so many students come out to what seems like a small town in Kansas. Our current student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1. So compared to maybe some other larger universities and larger community colleges, we really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one help here with our students and our professors, which is really beneficial for a lot of students. We also have 48 majors and programs, and we award about $1.5 million in scholarships each year. So a little bit about attendance. So for you Texans that are in the chat today, you will be under our border state tuition, um, which is roughly about $3,700 with tuition and fees and about 5,900 for housing and meals. Within that tuition and fees also includes online textbooks. So you don't have to go to Amazon or Chegg to rent textbooks. They're all online and free for you to use, which is a really great resource. A couple scholarship opportunities that we have are academic scholarships. So for example, if you're really interested into art club um, or art and you don't wanna be an art major, that's okay. You can still join art club and you have the opportunity to earn a scholarship through art club. We also have athletic training, student government association, collegiate farm bureau, a club for just about every major and every person. We also offer work study opportunities to all students. You can earn up to $9 an hour, work up to about 15 hours per week and earn about $4,700 per year for yourself to use on gas, uh, other bills, car payments, et cetera. We also offer athletic scholarships as well. Um, so if you're interested in athletics like football, basketball, softball, baseball, golf, anything like that, feel free to give me uh, your contact information or reach out to me um, and I'll definitely get you in contact with a coach. So these are just a list of our academic programs. I'm gonna to touch on two of them. Our nursing program, our pre-nursing program is ranked in one of the top 100 nursing programs in the country, which is fantastic. And you can actually earn your RN degree here at Garden City. You don't have to transfer anywhere to get that RN. You can take pre-nursing here um, and all the prerequisites and then move on to register nursing and then start working in a hospital or medical field wherever you choose as soon as you're done. Our John Deere program within our technical programs is also in one of the top uh, John Deere programs in the state, which is really great. So if you're really into tractors, automotive technology, those kind of programs, Garden City would be the place for you. 
For those juniors that are in this chat, you can also earn some dual credit. You can take some college classes through your high school through us uh, while you're still in school to kind of get you a jump ahead um, for when you get here as a freshman. Online courses are about $150 per credit hour. Again, if you're interested, feel free to contact me. And then these are just a few of our athletics. Again, we have baseball, basketball, cross country, um, and a lot of student clubs, collegiate quiz bowl, which they just competed nationally a few weeks ago, uh, Phi Theta Kappa, art club, nursing students, etc. Residential life, we have quite a few options. Those prices that you see there are for the year and the meal plan is also included. You get free laundry services, free Wi-Fi, a full service cafeteria, and it's all within walking distance to campus. No buses, no cars, no driving required. So if you're interested in seeing us, feel free to go ahead and take a picture of this screen here. We do virtual tours and on campus tours. So if you're interested in either, please feel free to give me your or contact me anytime or just go ahead and scan that QR code there. I also want to point out real quick that we do have tech days coming up. Tech days is where if you're a high school senior, you have the chance to win a $500 scholarship if you schedule a campus visit between the week of March 22nd and 31st for any of the technical programs listed there. Again, if you have questions, I'm directing this uh, event. So again, feel free to contact me for anything. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and make sure to scan this QR code if you'd like more information about us. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Sorry about that and the screw up there. It's my fault. I apologize. Nope. <laughs> That's okay. So, Thank you. So attendees, I know that uh, unfortunately the University of Kansas got cut off quickly. Uh, Megan has rejoined us. So I'm going to let her finish up her presentation before we before we wrap up here. So Megan, if you want to hop back on and, and perhaps give us a few more details, feel free to take a few moments here. I'm having serious issues right at the, at the moment. I'm going to put my contact information in the chat box. Um, if anyone has any questions about majors or anything KU, just please feel free to reach out to me and we can schedule a Zoom call or a phone conversation. My apologies. No worries, we all know it happens. So before we wrap up here, I'll have everybody come back on um, in terms of the, uh, the, the panelists. And then I wanted to wrap up with one fun question here at the, at the follow-up of the evening. So um, if each of you would answer the question, give me, give us, an interesting or fun fact about your school and Matt you you presented first so I will go down in order and let you start us off there sir. All right well uh, I would say we have a very entrepreneurial uh, spirit at Wichita State a lot of uh, businesses have come out uh, uh, from our graduates uh, most notably uh, the Carney brothers who are uh, a couple of our most storied graduates who uh, are the originators of the very first Pizza Hut, which has become the largest national franchise, uh, pizza franchise in the entire country. So uh, two of our graduates are uh, uh, the inventors of Pizza Hut and the original Pizza Hut is now a museum that is right behind our Office of Admissions on the Wichita State campus. Very fun. And now I'm hungry and I don't like you for that. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> So University of Lincoln, Nebraska, what do you got for us, Rebecca? So, sorry, my dog decided to bark right now. The entire time has been quiet. Um, <laughs> and I think is really great about Nebraska is that there is such school pride, um, not just on campus, but the community in general. When it is game day, the entire state turns red. Um, and so it is always really fun just being part of that and being part of game day. The stadium becomes the third largest city in Nebraska on football Saturdays. Oh, that's very interesting. Cameron, what about the University of Cincinnati? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is our crosstown shootout. So we are also a pretty big basketball school. We're a top 10 um, basketball program, according to the Associated Press. And so every year we have the crosstown shootout with Xavier University, which is right in, this, in, our, in our city too. And so our students will actually, uh, there's a, a statue of Oscar Robinson uh, that's on, in front of our Fifth Third Arena. And so our students will actually camp out overnight there'll be t-shirts and everything. 
Um, they'll actually defend the statue from the Xavier students trying to damage or trying to like, you know, vandalize it. Um, so that's a nice little fact we have there for the Crosstown shootout. Very fun, very fun. Uh, Megan, what would you say about the University of Kansas if you're with us there? I would say, I mean, the biggest tradition and thing that I remember from being a Jayhawk that really sticks with you forever is the way that our students camp out for seats at the basketball games in Allen Fieldhouse. It's just a memory that you will have forever. Um, you actually set up tents and you have basically teams where, you know, students are going to class and then someone else has to cover the spot and it really becomes it's a thing. It's like a very well orchestrated and organized thing. And it's so much fun. Um, but that's definitely something to look forward to as a Jayhawk. Very fun. And then uh, Mandy, what would you say about the cross state tradition at Kansas State? Um, so K-State, the fun fact I've been using all throughout these, mm -hmm. these COVID times is uh, the creator of the N95 mask is actually a K-Stater. So that's something that's been pretty cool. Um, but then for us, uh, you know, we're in ag school. And so we have a fresh, you know, cream, creamery, I guess uh, you could say on our campus, we have fresh dairy. So um, Call Hall is where um, our uh, creamery is on our campus. Um, Purple Pride is the most popular ice cream flavor. Um, um, it's a blueberry like vanilla kind of flavor it is chef's kiss it is amazing um and so uh you know on our campus it's always people want to come get uh, some, fresh, some fresh ice cream what is it with food and you guys i'm dying here food is it's Kel it. that's the thing <laughs> kelsey wrap us up with the uh, garden garden city community college yeah, so one of our programs that we have on campus is fire science, and we actually have a fire science building. So a lot of we've had quite a few students call 911 because they'll see this building on fire and they don't think it's supposed to be on fire, but it is. Um, we have a bunch of different rooms where they can kind of specifically put fires on and put fires out. And our fire science kids have to pull out 100 to 300 pound dummies out of this fire and get them to safety. So it's really cool, but it also kind of terrifies students when there's a building on fire so I can appreciate that from the outside looking in so well attendees thank you so much for joining us this evening on behalf of the institutions and strive scan certainly want to thank you for your time and participating uh, feel free to join us at the next hour we do have one more session left tonight uh, when you do close out here there will be a quick survey would appreciate you taking that on behalf of uh, everyone Thanks for your time. Stay safe and be well. Have a good night. Bye-bye, everybody.